Welcome to section 10.1, Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms. So these guys are a little bit of a challenge, but they can help you out if you master them, um, the Laplace transforms. They can help you take a harder problem and do them in an easier format. So as you know, computers work in binary, also called base two. And so how does a computer multiply 10 times five? Well, first it converts both of the numbers to binary. 10 to us is 1010 zero, one, zero, base two to the computer, and five is 101 one, one, base two. And if you would like to notice that these are the one, two, and four place values. So to make five, we need one group of four plus one group of one. Similarly, we need one group of eight plus one group of two to make 10. So to multiply, the calculator only knows zeros and ones over the computer. And so if we multiply one times this, we're gonna get one, zero, one, zero. Zero times that, and then one, zero, one, zero. When we multiply that through and then add, we get this guy. So we've got one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Okay. And so if you are careful, these are the ones, twos, fours, eight, 16, and 32 places. So we need 32 plus 16 plus two, but that is what we know as 50. Okay. So in a similar fashion, the Laplace transform takes a hard problem does it into a new version, kind of like the computer went to base two, did the work in base two, or does the easier work in Laplace space, and then we have to convert back to our original space, okay? Um, so in chapters five, six, seven, and chapter one, we just took our differential equation and then solved him and just did the, the hard way here involving derivatives. But here, if we go this way, the easier work is typically algebra, which is generally easier than derivatives. So what the heck is a Laplace transform? Well, to do the Laplace transform for a function, we'll call that function f of t. We're gonna create a new function, and to help us remember that he's a new function, we're gonna call him capital F of s, and denote that by the Laplace transform of f of t, which is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times whatever my function is I'm trying to do the Laplace transform of. And this works only for values of s for which the integral converges. So uh, let's do some by hand here. So let's actually find some Laplace um, transforms. And then again, we'll note here that it's easier typically to do the algebra here in, um, with the Laplace functions, transform functions, and than it is to do the derivatives. So let's do our, our first example here and find the Laplace transform for the function one. Well, as we've just seen from our definition, we take the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times our function, which is one, dt, which is then the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st dt, because times by one doesn't change it. Now we notice that this is a improper integral, so we are going to solve him using techniques we learned in calculus two. We're gonna take the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from zero to b of e to the negative st dt. And if you would like, you can do a u substitution, u equals negative st, so du equals negative s dt. And if we solve that for dt, we get that dt is du over negative s. So if we keep working on this guy, so we've got the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral, well, we can integrate. Yeah, no, yeah, let me do that u substitution. So, um, and I'll do it indefinite and then switch back. 
So we've got e to the u, because u was negative st, and dt is du over negative s. Okay. So we'll leave that as an indefinite integral. But we like the integral of e to the u because he's his own derivative and he's his own integral. But we also have this negative 1 over s factor out front. So let's carry him through. And then we've got, and we'll substitute back through in here, of e to the u, where e to the u was e to the negative st. And we need to evaluate this from 0 to b, which we're going to get negative 1 over s times the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the negative s b minus the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the negative zero, which is still zero. And as b approaches infinity, if s is a positive number, then this gives me e to the negative number, and e to the negative ginormously big number is zero. So we're going to get negative 1 over s times 0 minus 1, which is, if we multiply that through, 1 over s, provided, of course, that for this to work, s has to be greater than 0. Okay. So the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. Okay. Let's try it again. But now let's make the function b a little bit more interesting. Let's find the Laplace transform of the function t. So once again, we do the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t dt. So this is going to be an improper integral again. Let me skip a step here. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to b of e to the negative st times t dt. And we're going to need to do some integration by parts or use an integral table. So if I do integration by parts, let's see what we're going to get. So I'm going to let u equal t and dv equal e to the negative st. Then du would be equal to dt. And v, as we've just seen a minute ago, will be negative 1 over s e to the negative st. Okay. So using some integration by parts, we're going to get the limit as b approaches infinity of uv, which is negative 1 over s times t times e to the negative st. And we'll evaluate that from 0 to b minus the integral of v du, which is negative 1 over s e to the negative st times dt. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to b. And when we do that, um, let's see what we get here. If I put in a b for t, um, because of this negative exponential, this actually will grow, um, go to zero faster than this will get big. So that will be zero minus, stick a zero in here. That's one, but that's zero. So zero minus zero. So the first part is just a whole lot of nothing. But we still have to do the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral grow from 0 to b of, and minus the negative becomes the plus here, 1 over s is a constant. I'll bring that out front, e to the negative st dt. Aha! But we've already seen this today. That is 1 over s, and the limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b of e to the negative st dt is 1 over s. So we would get 1 over s squared. Therefore, the Laplace transform of the function t is 
1 over s squared. And the Laplace transform for 1 is 1 over s. We'll stop there and pick up in the next video.